Okay, we're an inventive lot, aren't we? I mean, Stirling engines come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and they use all kinds of methodologies for doing that one job. Now, basically, with a Stirling engine, what you're doing is you're getting some air, you heat it, and of course it expands, and you can just prove that with a balloon. Fill a balloon with air, tie it off, heat it, it'll get bigger. Equally, stick it in the fridge, it'll get smaller. So, we need to have air in a hot area where it can expand, then we need to move it to a cold area where it can contract. And that expansion and contraction can do work, which is exactly how every single Stirling engine works. But taking that simple idea and implementing it, doing something with it, is where the total inventiveness comes in. And it's just awesome to see. I mean, the basic one to shift that air around, of course, is a cylinder. If you have a cylinder with a piston in it, you've got the air in the cylinder and you stuff the piston up there, the air's got to move. And the first Stirling engines were exactly like that. They just moved that air around from one cylinder to another cylinder. Now, equally, you can force the air out, but you can just put something in its place. If I stand there, I'm filling the space that the air used to be. And that's what a displacer does. A displacer is just a solid object you shove into the area and the air's got to move. And of course, that's how these low thermal differences engines work. They have a polystyrene displacer. It goes down to the hot end, so the air has to move to the cold end, pulls up, has to move to the hot end. So you can displace the air as well as force it out of there. And these pistons don't have to be physical objects like that because air has a property. Air will do it all by itself. It will just move from hot to cold. And that is called a laminar flow. When you have that kind of laminar flow, of course, you're going to thermoacoustic engines, but it is that propensity of hot air to move and mix all by itself. And you can control that by making it do in a certain way, and the air will do exactly the same thing. Move from the hot end to the cold end. So you don't only really have to force it, you can rely on it doing itself. And of course, it takes time to do that. It takes time to get hot, it takes time to get cold. That time is called thermal lag, and you can use thermal lag, the time difference, to actually extract that work out of it as well. Now, who comes up with these things? Like I say, people are tremendously um, inventive when it comes to this sort of stuff and when to look at how you can implement that simple task of heating the air, moving it and cooling it and extracting the power from it, you can do that in a myriad of ways. Now of course the piston doesn't have to be a solid lump of material and you get um, pistons that are made out of water and of course that's great because the water always fits and that's the whole group of engines called the laminar flow engine. So we have the basic Stirling engine, which you can find in three types, is the Alpha, Beta, Gamma. And that's to do with how the pistons are actually separated from each other. Then you move into engines like the Ringbomb engine, which is a uh, combined engine. Then you have displacer engines, where you're moving a displacer. Then you have the fluid piston engines, like the fluidine engines. And then you have laminar flow, which allow the... the the air to move all by itself, or time lag, which allows the time difference to the heating and cold to be used. Now, loads of people have done loads of stuff on loads of different engines, but there was one guy which I came across, and I thought it was absolutely fascinating, in fact, called Ted Walbrook. Ted was a New Zealander, and he was looking at ways of getting rid of that displacer, or that piston that moves the hot air out of there, because the less moving parts you can have in something, of course, the better. Now, when you get rid of all the cranks, then you get what's called the free piston engines, which is what NASA came up with, and they're based on diaphragms when we did a replication of that. But it still has moving pistons. What Ted was interested in was getting rid of the moving piston altogether, and that takes him towards the thermoacoustic, because that's where the air is moving by itself. Now, we're going to build a um, replication of the Warbrook engine, because I want it to uh, have an experiment with, because we are looking at this, remember, the rocket stove and putting a sterling on it. That'll be on the main channel. But I thought I'd go through a little bit about the construction of sterling engines, just so our minds were sort of clearer about what it is and how they're constructed and what job they're trying to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.